Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And what we want to do in this particular video is look at how we can solve for a specific variable when we have multiple variables going on in, equa in an equation. So uh, this equation here could be a formula. It's actually not. But if you're working with formulas, uh, and there's a ton of them obviously in math and science, you're going to have to be able to rearrange those formulas or equations in terms of a specific variable. So the objective here is to solve for A. So you can see we have the variable A, M, R, T, and S. In other words, we want to kind of rearrange all of these variables such that we have a new equation where it's A is equal to whatever right here. So this is a really critical algebra skill, okay? Not only, again, for algebra, but for science as well. So if you think you could do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through the solution step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep, or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go take a look at the solution here. Again, we have A times M minus R, uh, parentheses, plus uh, T is equal to S. We want to rearrange this or write this in terms of A or solve for A. And the solution is the following. Okay, so here is the solution. A is equal to S minus T over M minus R. Now, if you have parentheses in there, that's even uh, more awesome. Okay, it's not uh, required. However, I do recommend that you do put parentheses around sums or difference differences in mathematics. That's a separate kind of conversation in and of itself. But if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, let's give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars, so you can tell your friends and family that you know exactly how to solve for a specified variable given an equation or um, uh, formula with multiple variables. Again, this is a super important skill, and it's one that tends to confuse a lot of students. So let me just show you a real super easy example. I like to use this particular example uh, pretty often. Now, if you um, have watched uh, other of my YouTube videos on this topic, you will have seen this uh, particular example. But uh, here, let's just take a look at it real quick. So let's suppose I have a formula. Okay, so formula is nothing more than an equation. This is a physics formula. It stands for force is equal to mass times acceleration. But currently... This formula is written in terms of F, okay? In other words, we have F is equal to, or we have solved for F, okay? It's in, written in terms of force. Now, let's suppose I wanted to write this in terms of A acceleration, okay? So we're like, well, let's just rearrange this uh, formula so that we have A is equal to whatever. Now, of course, uh, there, there's a relationship going on here between force, mass, and acceleration. It's specifically this right here. But if we wanted to uh, rearrange this or write this equation or formula in terms of A, how would we do this, right? Well, here's kind of the way I like to um, uh, teach this. So what you want to do is think of the variable that you want to solve for. In this case, it's A as a variable. So in other words, uh, and I know that kind of seems weird, but we're going to kind of just focus in on our mind's eye that the only variable we're seeing here or concentrating on is A. In other words, F and M um, are just going to be uh, placeholders for numeric values. So effectively, if you think of an equation, something like this, 10 is equal to, uh, let's use this right here just to make this nice and extra clear. So 10 is equal to 2 times A. Okay, you can see the 2 is where in the M spot, uh, where the M is located at, the M's location, right? In F, we have this 10 right here. So this is basically the same format of this problem. So to solve for A here, how would I solve this basic equation? Easy. I would just divide both sides of the equation by 2. Okay, so in this case, let's go ahead and put this like this. So by doing that, A would be equal to 10 over 2, or in this case, it would be F 
over M, okay? Because this is what uh, the placeholders there, remember, uh, two is where M was at. So if you can kind of think of this basic example uh, or something similar to it uh, as just a reminder that whatever you're looking to solve for, that's the only thing you're going to treat as a variable and all the rest of the variables, you're just going to kind of temporarily think of as numbers. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get into this problem. All right. So again, the objective here is to solve for A or to write this in terms of A. All right, so I'm just going to concentrate on that, on that A as the variable. And so let's go ahead and get into the problem. All right, so here it is, A times M minus R plus T is equal to S. So conceptually, again, you can kind of just think in your mind, oh, let's say M and R and T and S would just represent numbers. So you could plug in numbers right here and just kind of think about the steps you would do to solve this equation for A. Now, of course, right here, you would subtract these numbers, but we can't really subtract these numbers. But this is a good kind of model, frame of reference for you to kind of think about, all right, what do I need to do here? What are the steps I need to take? Well, you need to kind of just start doing some things with uh, this formula or this equation and see where it takes you. All right, so one of the things you could do is you could choose to say, well, all right, let me start doing some stuff here. And let's suppose I started multiplying, I distributed this A to this M and R. So now I have A times M minus A times R plus uh, T is equal to S. So at this point, we just kind of, um, uh, kind of distributed our A. And that's not necessarily a good thing, right? Because here, if this was an X and this was a number and this was X, this would be basically like like terms. So we're better off not doing that, okay? So in other words, although we can do that, that's not the, that's not the best first move, all right? So that's one potential move we could make. But again, it's a little bit confusing when you have these multiple variables going on. Another thing we could do is subtract T from both sides of the equation and this is what we want to do. So we're gonna leave this A just right where it's at, and we're going to uh, start isolating this A to one side of the equation. So let's go ahead and see the result of doing that. So when we subtract T from both sides of the equation, now I have A times M minus R is equal to S minus T, right? So we're kind of adding down in a column manner. So this would be S plus a negative T or S minus T. Okay, so now at this point, again, this is like A times some number. This is just some number in here, right? Let's just call that like 10. And S minus T is just some other number. Let's call that 20. So how would I solve for A here? Easy. I would just go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 10, right? In this case, that 10 is this part right here. So that's all we need to do, all right? So here, to solve for A, we're gonna divide both sides of the equation by this expression here, M minus R, both sides. So S minus T divided by M minus R is what A is equal to. Again, M minus R, anything divided by itself is going to be one. So this is right here, we're not gonna actually, it's not gonna cross cancel per se. Well, yes, it kind of technically would, we were just going to end up with a one. This divided by anything divided by itself is one, so we get up. We end up with a one a or a uh, divided by s minus uh, s minus t divided by m minus r. So this is our final answer. Again, it's always a good idea to put your sums and differences in algebra in grouping symbols parentheses. That helps you avoid a lot of errors. Um, when you're doing multiplication, et cetera, et cetera. Just trust me on this one. Now, how would I know that, right? Well, maybe it has something to do with the decades of, uh, you know, um, all the decades and years and hundreds of thousands of uh, math problems I've done through the years, right? You make a ton of mistakes. And the great thing about being a math teacher is you see a ton of mistakes, all right? I'm sure I made all these mistakes as well. You see patterns. And you know, from those patterns, you can come up with kind of tactics to avoid common misunderstandings. So again, put those grouping symbols, those parentheses in, uh, those will help you out. But solving for a specified uh, variable in an equation or formula is a critical skill. You're going to need this in algebra and in science, things like physics, chemistry, et cetera. So if you need help with this, I'm going to suggest checking out like my pre-algebra or algebra one course. Probably my algebra one course, I also have additional practice uh, 
uh, problems on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.